Are you tired of constantly searching and Googling different ways to lose weight, trying the next fad diet, losing weight, but then putting it back on and more? Today, I'm gonna to discuss how fad diets are keeping you fat, unhappy, and unhealthy. And if you stay till the end, I'm gonna share with you exactly what works my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and how they, yes, lose weight, but most importantly, keep it off in the long term while still eating the foods they enjoy but without spending hours in the gym. I'm Max Lowry, I'm an author and weight loss coach. I've spent the last 10 years helping thousands of people achieve long-term fat loss success. I've literally spent thousands of hours coaching people, so I know what works in the long term. A fad diet is something that promises health outcomes or weight loss from restricting food or restrictive behavior. They're often based on the latest celebrity trend, media trend, and often aren't backed by science. They often have massive marketing and ad campaigns and target very specific people using very specific language and messaging. They usually involve a drastic reduction in the amount of food that you eat, so very low calories, or they're cutting out certain foods and entire food groups. They are all without exception very difficult to stick to in the long term. For most of them, completely impossible. And because they're unsustainable, yes, you might lose weight in the short term doing them, but because they're unsustainable, they lead to yo-yoing. Because of this yo-yo effect, they keep you in what I call the dieting cycle. The diet cycle starts with you being unhappy with your situation, you're not happy with how you look in the mirror, you feel like you have some weight to lose. You Google how to lose weight and end up on some fad diet. This involves some kind of restriction and deprivation, where you're cutting out carbohydrates, for example. You're gonna be able to do this for a period of time, but eventually you're gonna feel restricted and deprived. Those feelings of restriction and deprivation will build to the point where you're obsessing about food and eventually when all the willpower motivation has been used up you give in and you binge on the foods that you've cut out. This leads to weight regain. You often end up even heavier than you were at the beginning and then eventually a period of time passes and you forget all that restriction and deprivation and you start another diet. Make sure you stay until the end of this video because I'm going to be going into detail on exactly why you end up heavier than when you started. Let me know in the comments if you recognize yourself being trapped in the dieting cycle. Common fad diets include Keto, Atkins, South Beach diet, juice fasting, lighter life, the raw food diet, celery juice. And yes, I would even add Slimming World and Weight Watchers into fad diets because they do not give you the long-term tools to get lasting success. I've had many clients who have lost a decent amount of weight on Slimming World and Weight Watchers, but eventually the weight comes back on. So the kind of litmus test for a fad diet is if it focuses on restriction and deprivation, on cutting things out of your diet, then most likely it's gonna be a fad diet that cannot be sustained. So how do fad diets keep you fat, unhappy, and unhealthy? Well, it does it in two main ways. The first is physical and has something to do with what's called your weight set point. Your weight set point is the weight at which your body thinks you should be. It's usually the weight that you spend quite a considerable amount of time at. Over time, as you put on weight very gradually, like most people do, your weight set point goes up and up and up and up. Because actually, your body doesn't like weight loss. Even though it's well documented, when you have a high body fat percentage, you're gonna be at risk from many lifestyle related diseases. It doesn't like it when we lose fat. So why is this? It's because we're still the same as we were when we were hunter gatherers, you know, biologically. No nothing has really changed. But the environment has drastically changed. And essentially, fat is stored energy. So when you lose weight, your body is seeing that as limiting its chance of survival. Because back in hunter gatherer times, we would have gone through periods of feasting and famine. And during those times of famine, we would have been able to tap into body fat stores and survive. Without this capability, we would not have got to this stage in human evolution. So there are two main things that happen when you lose weight, and especially when you lose weight really quickly, like with a fad diet. The first thing that's going to happen is your basal metabolic rate decreases. This is the amount of calories that you burn at rest. So if you're going to lie down all day and do nothing, you still burn a certain amount of calories for your body to function, your heart to beat, breathing, all that kind of stuff. You want your BMR, that calorie burn, to be as high as possible because it gives you more flexibility to eat more food. So the first thing that your body does is going to decrease your basal metabolic rate. It's thinking, right, I'm not getting the food in. I need to hold on to this fat. So I'm going to slow down what's going on within my body. So with this effect of the metabolism slower, if you want to continue losing weight, you have to eat less and less and less and less or exercise more and more and more and more. The second thing that happens with the weight set point, it's going to affect leptin and ghrelin, which are the main two hunger hormones. You start to feel perpetually hungry. Both of these things you have no control over this is subconscious but it leads to you unconsciously eating more feeling hungry at the time and putting the weight back on and because the metabolism has slowed down you end up heavier than you were before once you return to normal. This is one key reason why long-term fat loss is so complicated and why anyone that just tells you that all you need to do is eat less and do more is simplifying the subject. Fad diets can also lead to nutrient deficiencies, missed periods with hormone irregularities if you're a woman, and muscle loss. And believe it or not, you actually want to have as much muscle as possible because the more muscle you have, the higher your basal metabolic rate will be. This is one of the many reasons why men find it easier to lose weight than women because we have more men, therefore we burn more calories at rest. 
The second way in which fad diets keep you fat, unhappy and unhealthy is psychological. Inevitably, if someone is telling you you cannot eat carbohydrates, carbohydrates are the reason that you are overweight, then you are going to start to demonize carbohydrates. You're going to feel guilty about them. You're going to obsess about eating carbohydrates because you've got this idea that you're not allowed to eat them. It can actually lead to disordered eating behaviors like binging and secret eating. Fad diets can also increase anxiety. You know, let's say that you're cut out carbohydrates, you're on keto, there's a social situation and you're going to be there feeling very awkward. You don't want to tell people why you're not eating carbohydrates. It could just lead to you being antisocial and maybe saying no to social situations because you're not going to be in control of the food. A very high percentage of the people that I work with have had a mum, a teacher, a doctor say something or behave with food in a certain way and that has affected their own relationship with food, their own behavior for their whole life. So if you are constantly hopping from one diet to the next, if you are constantly cutting out certain foods, being antisocial at the dinner table, you're potentially setting a very poor example for your children and they will pick up on this and that can lead to their own issues with food. Every time that you put the the weight back on, it affects your self-belief. You start to think that you don't have the willpower, you don't have the motivation, you don't have the discipline. When you lack self-belief, that can affect your self-esteem and your confidence. Initially, it starts with just your weight and food, but that can cross over into many areas of your life. If you can't take control of something so basic as your food and your nutrition, then how can you make important decisions at work? How can you make important decisions with your family and your children? The longer that you stay trapped in that diet cycle, the more likely you are to eventually give up. A lot of my clients come to me in that situation where they've been trapped in the dieting cycle for many years every time they fail it affects their confidence the self-belief and they develop an identity of failure they become someone who cannot succeed at fat loss they become someone who's constantly going from one diet to the next and that can be a very difficult thing to unravel especially when you're trying to work this out by yourself so what does work for long-term fat loss what do i teach my clients i focus on habits and behaviors and behavioral change instead of just restriction and deprivation habits by definition can become automatic so by incorporating the right habits at the right time for the right person, you can essentially automate the process of fat loss so you don't even need to think about it. Once something is automated, then you get long-term success. By focusing on habits and small lifestyle changes, you don't get the same reaction within the body. When the fat loss is very gradual, you don't get the same issues with the weight set point, with a decrease in metabolism and increased hunger. All my clients are losing weight, predictably inconsistently, and not feeling hungry. That is the holy grail of fat loss. Some examples of fat loss habits are filling up on protein, staying hydrated, getting proper sleep, producing snacks, eating on a smaller plate. Those habits in isolation when done by themselves don't make a big difference. But when you combine lots of small habits done consistently over a long period of time, that's when you get long-term success. Alongside habits and behaviors, I focus on shifting my client's mindset, getting them out of what I call the anti-dieters mindset, all or nothing thinking and black and white thinking and helping them start to truly believe that it is possible for them. If you want to understand more about what I teach my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, then check out my fat loss mini course by clicking that link below. All right, guys, hopefully this has been useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about fat loss and long-term behavioral change. If you want to learn more about long-term fat loss, then make sure you subscribe and hit like on this video and I'll be releasing new videos every single week.